Hi, and welcome back to the channel once again. We're back on the old poor shit 924. Found a band behind a barn with a blown engine, purchased for $300, found an engine for $200, we're trying to make it run and drive for under $1,000. Good luck with that. So join me once again as I continue down this path of regret. Well, here we are back at it once again, uh, working on chainsaw motors. Not much of a plan here, just pretty much going to prep the car and prep the new engine to be installed. We've got a wide variety of things to do, like finish heat shrinking the uh, wire harnesses that I repaired from the uh, mouse damage. you got to rebuild this thing at some point. As far as cleaning and stuff goes, I think I'll just... It, It'll be fine. We got to get all the intake. We pretty much got to strip this down right to the bare block because we're going to use everything off of this engine. Not 100% sure, but this might be different than the 77 because this is actually an 81. I'm not sure, but we got a busted stud down here, and I believe this manifold may be warped. That one isn't. There's a few things that are different on the uh, intake as well. So, knowing that this engine ran really good with all of its stuff on it, we'll just put that all on here and hope it works. I think we'll go ahead and start off with this exhaust manifold here. Apparently, whoever engineered this, after they retired, got rehired by Ford on the uh, Triton division because we have a broken exhaust stud and a warped manifold. Sound familiar? All right, I guess we'll start by trying to snap the bolts off of this here motor mount. Uh, how much you want to bet the Allen socket I need no longer exists? Obviously metric side. What do you know, the first one I grab is actually gonna work. It's weird. Should probably do a smart thing and try to shock these things to some point. So kind of try to avoid snapping them. I mean, they shouldn't snap. This block seems fairly clean. Please don't break. Please don't break. Oh boy. Seems like it wants to break. Oh. Perfect. I would say we got fairly lucky with these. Oof. I think if they've been in there a whole lot longer, we'd have three holes to drill. Put this over in the parts bin. You'll see how this is loose and the bushings are all shot. I guess we'll just take it off anyhow so I can get a better shot at that exhaust manifold stud. And I think before we take this exhaust manifold off, we will try to drill this broken stud out. Reason being there, I could use this manifold stud as kind of a guide. Because I believe my extractor kit comes with, it's up there, comes with some kind of a guide thing that'll actually slip into the hole and center the drill bit. So that'd be nice. I can never drill a straight hole, ever. I should also state that for the last couple of weeks, I've had this motor laying on its side. And I have repeatedly soaked that stud with uh, the PB blaster. I hope that really helps me out. I've actually soaked pretty much everything. I really hope that helps me out so I can 
take this off without snapping off anymore. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, get the stray in this head completely out of the way. Safety squints. <sighs> Safety squints again. Oh, metal flying everywhere. Fairly centered. I would say it's probably down as far as that's going to go. All right. Now we'll go ahead and snap all the rest of these studs off and remove the manifold. Okay, operation snap every stud off, starting now. Uh-huh. Wonder if I got a 12 millimeter six point. Incredibly doubtful. I'll be damned they do. Okay, starting process over. Oh boy. Ooh, that manifold is warped really bad. I hope the other one isn't. Let's see, this one wants to play. Oh. Okay. Nice. Oh. God, I love rust. Every stud's coming out, that's perfectly fine. We can always go ahead and just put bolts back in. Yeah, and all studs. Clamp down a little better, but you know what? Obviously these didn't. And it's not like I'm keeping it anyways. <laughs> oh. You got one stud coming off, or one nut coming off. Eh, not quite. Yeah, the two that I can't put the uh, socket on, just going to double nut it, double nut it, double wrench it, it's probably the ones that are going to fight me the most. Where's my 12 millimeter, might you ask? Hello, hello, hello. There you are. Right, that's going to be a 12 point. I hope that's not going to be an issue.
Hmm. Maybe they're actually 11 millimeter. Oh, now I find my 12 in the in here. That's pretty typical. Here's an 11. Oh, just a really loose 12 mil. Okay. Don't do stupid shit. I think he just did stupid shit. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did! Would a vice grip get on there? Hey, that one's loose. Guess we can take the oil filter off. Oh, great. We got one of these kind. Oh. Never mind. That wasn't too bad. And this is going to leak all over the place. Shouldn't. It's been on its side for the last forever. Smells like oil. This one's really on there. See, I told you that the, uh, the ones I couldn't get the socket on were going to fight me the most. Oh, boy. The nut broke free on that one. <laughs> what the hell? Of course you would. Well, now that it's all destroyed, maybe the 12 mil will actually bite. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have one stud remaining. Kind of like me at bar time. That's a stupid joke. Don't. Ignore me. Is the microphone still on? It is. Well, if only they all did that. Could have saved themselves buying a damn stud kit. What about this one? Can I just turn that out with a damn wrench? Is that actually turning to... Oh, no. Nope. Entire stuff's going with it. That's okay. Okay. Well, I guess we have no choice but to use the other exhaust manifold. Look at that. Maybe kind of hard to tell, but 
Here we go. Check it out. Those have been broken for a very long time. Gasket's blown out, but it hasn't disappeared. At least the head's not burned away. I've seen that happen already before. <laughs> oh, golly. All right, it's been a few days. A uh, little bit of progress has been made. We finally got the old block pretty much stripped down. Pretty much got the old block all stripped down. Pretty much got all the parts stripped off the old engine that we need, uh, including the bell housing and the clutch and even the exhaust manifold. We got lucky here. This one is in uh, is in one piece. In addition to that, we also got all the new exhaust manifold studs put in, minus the one that didn't come out. I just left it because we usually know where that leads to. Also took it upon myself to empty all my boxes of parts and lay them out in one spot instead of scattered all about in the garage. Got the old intake off the original engine here and cleaned it up. It was filled with just oil and debris and all kinds of stuff. That's all cleaned up and ready to go. Had to oil bath the throttle body, the, uh, I guess, secondary butterfly, I guess, was if you want to call it that. Kept seizing up. Uh, I think when this car was sitting, it got just a massive amount of moisture, I think, through the exhaust and through that intake because it was, it was full of corrosion. I've been given that consistent oil bath for the last week. I think it should be fine now. Hopefully. Wow. That's extraordinarily loose. Okay, so there's supposed to be a dot either on the front of this gear or on the back. So when that dot lines up at this pointer here, and I believe in number one is that TDC, that's supposed to be like your locking point. And I believe there is actually uh, markings on the flywheel, and you're supposed to line them up through the like a view, like a sight, like a view, view, a whole window, a window on the bell housing. But as you can see, that's, we can't do that because the bell housing's over there. And in my opinion, and this is kind of a risky way of doing it, but even if you just mark it as it sits, wherever that might be, and you take the belt off and put it back on in that same spot, you're fine. But I would like to know that given that this is loose, is all hell that this is actually lined up. So let's, let's give that a try. It's just a little cruddy, it's hard to see. Okay, there's a dot there. Well, All right, the exhaust valve is opening. Okay, so that's TDC exhaust stroke. Intake valve opening. Well, I don't think this thing is time right at all. Why is a TDC the intake valve open? 
Now I'm confused. I got to think about this for a second. By that, I mean I got to read the book. Okay, so I did some research, and, and I don't know why. I never write important stuff down, but I'm almost positive that when number one is a top dead center and you line this pointer up, or the line the dot up in the back of the cam gear with this pointer, that's the way it's supposed to be. This isn't that way right now. I don't know. And I was already kind of confused by what was going on. And then I YouTubed it, and now I'm really confused because there's supposed to be a notch in that that lines up with this and all I could find. And that's supposed to be TDC. And all I can find is this boogered up mess right here. And when it's at TDC, that's nowhere near close. I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, that's all got to come off anyways. Also, the bolt that holds the tensioner on for the timing belt is stripped. And that goes into the head. Uh, it does tighten back up, but it's like someone had too long of a bolt and just sent it in there. Now it won't come out without snapping. And in other good news, that bearing's bad. So that's nice. Let's get this thing flipped around and get that oil pan off, huh? This is a very tall, short, awkward engine. It might actually hit the bottom, but let's see. And be very careful. Afraid of that. It's kind of top heavy. As I was close to ups. Oh, there we go. Ah, optical illusion. Turned out fine. Nice. One thing nice about them, they have little pry spots on here. I come right off. All right. Well, it's definitely uh, it's not rusty. It's fairly clean. <laughs> and those are itty bitty little pistons. <laughs> look at that. Would you just look at it? All in all, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Or how nice this gasket's gonna come off. Oh. Not too bad at all. As far as the oil pan goes, it uh, she's a little dirty. But not bad, you know. It was parked up for fifteen years or so, so I mean you're gonna you're gonna get some settlement and some crud, but you know, that's another reason why I took it off. We can clean this all out, start over fresh, you know, and hope the rest of this is good. Let's pull some caps off and see how they look. I'm not going to pull them all off. I'll just pull number one and uh, see how it looks. Had to grab me a little bit of a thinner socket so it would 
cover the nut better. Hmm. Hey, well, there's definitely some wear there, but it's a, it's a long ways from copper. Crankshaft looks pretty good. I'm just leaving the oil on there. You know, I think I feel pretty confident enough to leave them alone. It'll go ahead and torque that one back on, and I think I'll maybe pull that main cap off and take a look at them. About the same amount of wear as the front. Nothing severe, no gouges, no copper. I'm throwing it right back in and not going to worry about it. And then I just went ahead and pulled off number two main just to check it out. And just some minor wear. And the most part looks pretty good. It's safe to say the bottom end of this motor is pretty healthy. Okay, well, that's going to do it for right now. Getting late and I got interrupted way more times than I anticipated today. But we can go to bed knowing that we have a healthy bottom end. Come back here tomorrow, get this all cleaned up, new seals on it, pan gasket and crank seal in the front, baiting on taking apart the oil pump. I might just leave it, it'll be fine. See you tomorrow. Here's my little handy gasket kit that I was able to find for it. It's a rear main seal. It's a front crank seal. I don't know what that, I think that might be for maybe for thermostat. This comes with the thermostat housing and I think the water pump. And it's actually, it's almost every gasket for that engine minus the head gasket and the valve cover uh, and the cam seals and the distributors. It's basically the bottom end. And always remember, you don't have to go completely crazy with this stuff. That's usually just a little dab. Okay, that was maybe too much. You get my point. There's no sense to going crazy. I usually just like the smear it around. I always smear it to the outside because you don't want too much of that to puke into there. Plug up your pickup tube and whatnot. back for one final attempt to get this engine prepped and ready to put into the car as you can probably already tell i have very limited time to be able to commit to doing this work and making videos and this and that i get like 10 minutes here maybe a half hour here an hour there sometimes it's best just to shut the camera off and just get some work done which which is what's happened manifold installed Alternator that I'm not sure works, probably doesn't, is installed. If you remember from earlier on, we had an issue with the threads being stripped out on the uh, timing belt tensioner. I was thinking that threaded into the head, but thankfully it threaded into the thermostat housing, which I robbed off of this one. Yeah, that's not good. And the bearing was obviously shot. I know this one looks kind of crummy, but it's actually, I think, very low miles. So we're just, you know, leave it. Got this 
heater hose coolant pipe Y pipe thing that's on. This is a breather hose. I don't know, they must have thought they were engineering this for like a 502 Chevrolet, but it's pretty big. I don't know. That's supposed to hook up to the air box and all this stuff, but I'm just going to, I don't know, make some kind of a little filter on here and just let it breathe into the atmosphere like they were originally intended to. Anyway, so now we're just down. Oh, I almost forgot. I also pulled out the old front crank seal and put in a new one. Now we're down to throwing the timing belt on, and I got that all set right. It's a typical TDC number one. When the dots lined up on the back of this to the pointer here, that cam's where it's supposed to be. Throw the belt on, that's done. Timing belt cover, V belt. And I think put this side motor mount on first, and I leave this on until it's in the car, and then also put the distributor on. And I think we're set. We can finally get this thing together and then put it in that and hope it runs and does what I want it to do so I can, I don't know, drive it, sell it, something. Big. Well, oh well, I'll have to do some more research or measure this out and get the right one. I don't need that. there we go i think we'll go ahead and end the video off here we're 90 percent ready to throw that thing back in that piece of shit with the exception of a couple things the next video we'll throw the rear main seal in it flywheel clutch and bell housing and then toss into that thing and see if it runs hopefully but until then thanks for watching have a good one